Broncos country, let's ride into this video because I've been wanting to talk about this since the trade went down. But you know, some other things came up and I just decided to wait until before the season, which is why we're here now. So if you don't know why Russell Wilson is in a Broncos jersey, let's start by going all the way back to February when the Denver Broncos were rumored to be in the running for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, remember that? When Aaron Rodgers blue balled the entire league with the idea that he'd be traded or even retired before he'd play for the Packers again? Turns out, it was all just negotiation tactics. And for Rodgers to get a big ass contract of 150 million over the next three years. But that's besides the point. Let's get back to A-Rod potentially being a Bronco. So back in February, the Denver Broncos had just named former Packers offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett as their head coach, which connected Rodgers to Denver even more. Plus, Denver had just committed $95 million in investing into their wide receiver court in hopes of luring the likes of an Aaron. And in the sense that they gave some pretty big contracts to Tim Patrick and Cortland Sutton during the offseason. And that's not even mentioning the fact that they have 2020 first round pick Jerry Judy on the roster, who is said to have a breakout season after coming off a 10 game season in 2021. So like he's bound to improve, right? And while all of this was done in the hopes of getting A-Rod, their plan B wasn't too bad because with Aaron off the table, there was only one move the Broncos could make at this point. Before we get on with that one move, Let's stop to like and subscribe because it just really helps with channel growth and I, I want to grow. So, you know, just like and subscribe or at least like the video. Come on, man. Anyway, that one move would be to trade for another disgruntled QB, this time in Seahawk legend QB3 Russell Wilson, where Denver receives Russ and a 2022 fourth round pick for in return. Five draft picks, the first being a 2022 first round pick, second round pick, fifth round pick, plus a 2023 first and second round pick. And the best player in this trade would have to be starting tight end Noah Fant, who was an absolute stud on offense, pretty mid at fantasy. And the other two players were defensive end Shelby Lewis and 2019 second round pick Drew Locke out of Missouri. And this is after only having one full starting season, which was back in 2020. And after reviewing the details, I think it's pretty obvious as to who's going to win this trade, if you know what I'm saying. And coming off of a 7-10 record and last place finish in the AFC West, with Teddy Bridgewater starting 14 of those games for the Denver Broncos while going 7-7, seven seven, it seems that on the outside looking in, Denver is destined to make the playoffs, now with Russell Wilson at the helm. And with defensive cornerstone Randy Gregory being added from the Cowboys, who's put on like a 5-year $70 million deal. So this guy's supposed to be a stud next to Nick Chubb. <laughs> Nick Chubb. But there is one major reason as to why the Broncos might still miss the playoffs, even with all these additions on both sides of the ball and upgrades. Well, actually three reasons. And each of those reasons being their division, their division opponents in the Las Vegas Raiders, Los Angeles Chargers, and Kansas City Chiefs. That's right. The only reason I think Denver and Team 3 might miss the playoffs is because of the division they're in. I mean, it's that. First, you have the Chargers who have Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and Austin Eckler on offense, making them like strong as fuck, while having stars like Derwin James, Joey Bosa, Cleo Mack, and JC Jackson on defense, with two of those being new additions to the squad. Like, the LA Chargers are absolutely loaded, and Jay Herb is looking like a top 5 MVP candidate this season. Then we got the Vegas Raiders who finished 10 and 7 last season and honestly only got better during the offseason. With major signing of superstar receiver Devontae Adams, the team's only going up. I mean, I'm sure y'all know, but Derek Carr and Adams actually played together. 
back in their college days at Fresno State. And as a Cali kid, you I've heard this fact like a thousand times. But all it means is that there's chemistry already built there. And that they're probably going to be good right away. And last but not least, the most important kryptonite to Russ and the Broncos having enough success to reach the playoffs is the god team that is the Kansas City Chiefs. All those guys on the roster, you all know them, so I don't have to list them off. But one of the biggest roster shifts for the Chiefs this offseason would be the loss of Tyreek Hill to the Miami Dolphins for a handful of picks and replacing him with Juju Midschuster. Look, I don't hate the guy, but he ain't no Tyreek. You get me? But if we're being honest, Patrick Mahomes could throw to a bunch of nobodies and still play like a goat. I say that all to I say all of that to say that these three teams have a massive impact on the Broncos season because Denver is going against these dudes six games out of a 17 game season. And when you play 17 games in one year, every single game matters. It ain't like baseball, okay, with 162 games. It ain't like basketball with 80 games, 82 games, you know, every game matters here. So Denver is basically guaranteed to have six really hard games. And even if they only lose three, that could be the deciding factor for them making a playoff run. But if this team is as good as I think they could be, then it shouldn't be much of a problem. The biggest problem for them? Yes. But just because it's the biggest problem doesn't mean it'll be hard for them to overcome. So if you ask me, will Russell Wilson be enough to make the Broncos a playoff team? My answer is yes. I mean, dude should have been an MVP by now. He had like a 40 TD season only two years ago with 4,000 plus throwing yards and a 100 QBR, a 100 plus QBR at the age of 32. I mean, I guess he didn't win it because he struggled towards the end of that season, but he was on pace to have like an MVP. So there's that. And this guy knows what it takes to reach the big stage. I mean, he's made it there twice. Won once and played another versus the Denver Broncos. Talk about full circle. If anyone can take a team full of mid from seven and 10 to not only playoffs, but possibly Super Bowl champs, it would have to be Russell Wilson. Anyway, that's it for the video. I uh, love to make content, so just keep watching. It's quicker going back to football, not just because my ba- I mean, not just because my baseball one performed badly, but because I feel like it, you know. And I kind of wanted, like I said, I wanted to talk about this. Uh, will this be in there? I don't know. Should be cut. Um, why is it? Why are we? Why are you still watching? Why? Are